Hey, this is Charlie with 4BZ Truth. Hey, thanks for watching. And uh, just wanted to talk to you guys about a couple things um, in regards to um, inversions. So um, I was at church on Sunday and they had an image of a crystal ball image here. So th these are balls that um, are solid glass and they invert the image and flip it upside down. I've heard that's what an eyeball does. It actually flips the image back upside down and your, our brains interpret it to be um, right side up or whatever. But um, the reason I'm bringing this up is it made me think about atmospheric conditions when you look over like a large uh, expanse or a large expanse of area. So like I first saw this Joshua Newicki image was back in 2015 and um, basically uh, the news guy said that the image here is is uh, a superior mirage now I, I looked up superior mirage and I found images like this where you have like a reflection from the atmosphere inverting and it's distorted looking. Um, so anytime you have a clear view of something, there's no atmospheric disturbance. Now you can look at these mountains and see, oh, okay, th these mountains are on the other side of the water, but you have a superior mirage right here. So, so basically there's a ship that's on the water and an inverted image that's directly above it. Um, it's an atm atmospheric condition that causes that. Um, and a lot of times uh, if you see something uh, across the water and it looks like it's disappearing, oftentimes what you're actually seeing is the beginning of uh, a mirage that's actually covering up. Now this is not a good example of, of that. It's actually um, just showing what the atmosphere is capable of doing. Now the thing that actually is also catching my attention is this picture here. It shows uh, somebody that's looking across the water. Now the line of sight would actually be straight and depending on the warm air or the cold air might shift the direction that you see the, the image. So, um, and, and it, again, it could be d uh, determined on the amount of moisture that's in the air, like the condensation. So I have kind of a theory uh, about curvature. I can't say it. Curvature um, of, you know, the globe or whatever. Now, uh, I find myself in, in this uh, studying, trying to figure out, uh, you know, if there's curvature or if it's a flat plane. I find myself realizing that uh, any kind of long distance is going to have uh, atmospheric disturbance. And uh, it's going to be difficult to hone in on anything that would be a, a reliable uh, piece of information or uh, scientifically re reliable because anytime you look over water you, it could just be uh, looking through a lens so to speak kind of like this ball you know what if you're just looking through something that's so f uh, the combination of of distance you know uh, and the in you know the atmospheric conditions may cause uh, s symptoms of, of something just like this. Ooh, I forgot to actually click on this one. This, this is interesting too. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is water that's beating on uh, the bottom of, of this thing. And you can see how it actually distorts the image a little bit around the edges here. It almost looks like a fisheye lens or something. So back to my theory, I think that it's uh, inconsistent evidence. Uh, if you want to try to prove whether 
the globe there's a globe or a flat earth because um, if you're trying to say oh look at there's a ship off in the distance and it's it appears to be going over the curvature unfortunately you're probably viewing something like an atmospheric condition that is causing your eye to not see the image anymore or it could be so far out that your eye is incapable of seeing it that's why you have the nikon cool p900 you know where some someone might be zooming in on a boat and you can see it back to this picture of chicago i wanted to actually compare you know like this picture here Here's an example of an atmospheric condition where you can see a shifting of the skyline. It almost looks like there could be curvature just based on the fact that you you can only see the tops of the buildings. Now, when you look at, uh, this one's sweet. I love this picture. Um, you can see a lot more of the buildings in this one. And then of course this one where it shows more detailed So basically, I believe that this is an example of at, it's not because the conditions are right that you can see this quote unquote mirage, but it's actually the conditions are right because you don't see any atmospheric disturbance. This is another one. You can see uh, Milwaukee, I think, Mil. Key. So this is what I found uh, in my search for uh, lights being seen from the other side of Lake Michigan, uh, Milwaukee skyline. So you have these lights and uh, now I, I was looking into this and it actually was saying something about how it was a rare occurrence. So the lights of Milwaukee were seen Thursday night from Lake Michigan shores of Muscogon. Late in the evening Thursday, uh, stretching into early Friday morning, you could see the lights of Wisconsin from Muscogon shoreline. The rare atmospheric condition allows lights 80 miles across Lake Michigan, actually 83, because I actually was looking at the, the map here. Um, maybe, well, I, I looked it up earlier and it was uh, from Milwaukee to Muscogon is 83 miles, but 80, 83, whatever the difference, it doesn't matter, but. Anyways, um, this article, you will you can find it on this website here. I can put that link in the description below so you can see what, I, what it was referring to. Basically, they're chalking this up to a superior mirage, potentially. Interesting stuff. So 83 miles across the, the lake. Uh, this is not the best quality picture I could... I mean, it is the best quality picture I can find, but it's probably not the best one you could get. Uh, I just don't know where to look for the for the best one. So, but interestingly, the the sky is clear. The clouds are really high in the sky. It looks like uh, some scattered cirrus clouds or something. Um, to me, it appears that the the conditions are very clear. If you um, look at a lot of the superior mirages that are going to be like a, it looks more cloudy normally or humid or something like that this looks like a real mild clear day so it's hard to tell and uh not to mention it's uh after the sun goes down so dusk so here is the icing on the cake earth curvature calculator um it's from earthcurvature.com um, 83 miles across Lake Michigan calculates to 4,593, well, I'll just call it 94, 45, 94 feet, which is pretty dang near a mile of curvature. Let's take a look at a mile of curvature again. Eh, doesn't really look like there's a mile of curvature there, unfortunately. <laughs> it's hard to tell. Because you're looking, I've, I've heard it said, if you're looking through the atmosphere, the light will bend to the shape of the earth. Somebody actually told me that once, but I don't buy it. I think it's kind of silly. So it's saying 
first mile it's 0.67 see and again i don't even know if this is accurate i'm just going based on what other people are saying the the calculations are and what they should be um so it's your words not mine showing you something like an anomaly that you can't explain from the earth curvature calculator and that is that you can see 83 miles over Lake Michigan. What do you have to say to that? If you believe that the curvature, I mean, if the earth is in fact a globe shape, how do you explain images like this where you can see 83 miles across the lake? Let's get real. There's enough uh, evidence to say that there is too many variables to consider when you know trying to do science on this situation um, you have to consider the atmospheric conditions and everything so don't try to use atmospheric conditions to prove that you can see a mirage or a superior mirage like it allows you to see it based on the light bending. I actually think the light bends if you have certain conditions.